Hello guys and dolls, welcome back to Honey Badger 3D Print and Paint. Today, we are taking a look at the Anchor Make M5. Before we get started, roll those credits. Okay, so first and foremost, disclosures. This machine was sent to us by Evo 3D. We were not paid for, for this review, but they did give us the machine for free and we are keeping it. So, um, so all the opinions and everything that is expressed in this video are our own. Evo 3D have no editorial rights. Evo 3D are a reseller of these. They are not a direct representative of Anchor Make but make of this video what you will as a result of that. So let's talk about the anchor make. So let's talk specs to begin with. So 235 by 235 by 250 is the build volume. With that, you get a direct drive extruder, a filament runout sensor, an AI camera, a touch screen, a removable bed, and some pretty impressive speeds. This will do Wi-Fi printing as well. Um, you can use Anchor Make Studio um, to, uh, to send those prints via Wi-Fi. Um, there is also an SD card slot up the top as well as a USB-C connection. Let's talk about this machine. So this machine needs to be viewed in context, right? It was originally a Kickstarter. Anchor Make are a well-known brand. You know Anchor from their batteries, from their Zolo Liberty headphones from their power banks and their 50 million other things that they also make. They're kind of a catch all brand. I think of them in the same terms I think of Samsung, right? Samsung make TVs and phones and DVD players and hi fi's and all of that kind of stuff. This is kind of that as well. So I and begrudged that they did a Kickstarter to kick this off. They absolutely had the funding on their own. They did not need to use Kickstarter to be able to do that, but they did run a very successful campaign. So these machines all went out, they were sold, they were shipped, they did very well. Um, something that I would probably say is that, um, is that this came out a politically complicated time for us in 3D printing because as this campaign was drawing to a close, Bamboo Labs came along with their X1 and kind of rewrote the rule book on what this price point slash sort of these types of printers should be doing and reset a standard. But you have to view this machine in context, right? 749 pound, it is a bed slinger, um, it does three times faster than an ender. It prints on average about 200 millimeters a second. Um, it's very comfortable at 150 all the way up to about 250. I started seeing a little bit of artifacting after that, but there's been firmware updates since that point that have reduced a lot of that as well. Everything in here was printed um, on their stock profiles. It was printed, um, it was printed at 200 millimeters a second for everything. Um, it was, I used the app for a lot of these as well. I'll put up a time lapse of, of what the camera looks like. So check that out. So as you can see, it makes really good time lapse videos. You do have to be a little bit careful about lighting. So obviously this doesn't have its own light. So if you're turning the lights on and off, it can it can kind of mess with the uh, the time lapse that you get, so you kind of have to leave the light on. Um, the app is fine. Um, I don't really use apps a lot. Um, I don't really like having that many sort of individual apps on my phone for all the different printers that we have that come through. But the app does work. It does what it says on the tin. The ultra short throw um, direct drive performs really really well. Um, you can see from the prints that we have here, which we'll show you some close-ups in a second, um, the print quality really is there. It does a really good job. Um, it, it, you know, it prints really fast. It does flexible filaments as well. It's a really, really nice machine. Um, this price point puts it right up against, say, a Prusa Mark III S Plus Mac 4 Turbo Elite, whatever the newest one is. Not the Mark IV, I'll admit. Um, although, actually, 
You probably could put this up against a Mark IV and it would perform pound for pound pretty much the same. Quality wise, it's done a really, really good job. So we printed everything here at a 0 0.012 layer height. It says it has a, a, point, a point 0.1 resolution. I've had it down as low as 0 0.08 and it printed perfectly well when it did that as well. Um, the flow rate is nice. The finish that it gets is nice. It's a nice printer. It really is. Um, 749. Right, let's, let, 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 let's address the number. 749, not cheap. However, this is basically solid aluminium. Um, it's fingers can't get into lead screws and it's a very nice, sleek, easy to control package. Because it's networked, you could control them on a farm basis. Um, if I was trying to think about who this machine was for, this machine is perfect for schools. It's perfect for maker spaces. It's perfect for entry level engineering stuff. Dimensional accuracy on this is really, really good. Dimensional accuracy on this, we found about 0 0.1 to 0 0.2 deviation. Um, so we've actually got this one here, which is a, uh, this one is another, um, print test and uh, and everything from a 0 0.3 absolutely fine the 0 0.2 on this is fused um, so any so about a 0 0.1 deviation on, um, on on dimensional accuracy and again to be clear that's at 200 millimeters a second so if you brought that down a little bit brought down the layer height to, to the 0 0.1 there's a good chance that you'd be able to get a really really good dimensionally accurate print out of that so before we go any further, let's take a look at some of the prints that we've done and some of the quality that it's turned out. So you can see with this Benchy, nice and clear, really clear on the text as well. A really good job on the bow there. Almost no, this was done at a 0 0.2 layer height. Really nice on the bridging. So really nice on the arches, really nice on the stack. Overall, really, really solid benchy. Then we have the Anchor Make Scraper. So this is one of the files that comes on the uh, on the machine. Just a little scraper to remove the uh, to remove prints. And again, came out really, really nice. Really nice top layers there. So that's really good. We've got here. Yep. We've got here a vase, so um, it makes it look as if there are uh, layer lines in it. But actually, because this transitions from red to black, this is literally, these are, this is just where the filament transitions. This is actually completely smooth. It's done in vase mode, done at 250 millimeters a second, and it's done a really, really good job. There's no missed layers. There's no under extrusion or anything like that. Really, really nice vase. Then we did this doggy from uh, Flexi Toys. So this all prints in place, all prints as one. And then all these articulated parts just pop um, when you're finished. It was done in an azure film sparkly filament. And as you can see, all printed really well. All of it moves nice and freely. You're able to move this dog tail and everything. All really, really nice. So that came out really good as well. Then we move on to the all-in-one print test. So you can see here the text, nice and clean. Overhang-wise, it's all good up to about 70 degrees. You can see there, same on the steeper curve as well. If we look at how this does on the back side, so the bridging here has done really, really nicely. Retraction test, also really good. There's meant to be a third pin that I unfortunately knocked off. The dimensional accuracy is bang on here as well. So for all of these and for these holes, they are exactly um, correct. Measured those with calipers. Um, so I'm really happy with how that turned out. It would have been a little, you'd have been, there's some more text that goes on there and things. If you do it at a lower layer height, then that comes out. Uh, and then finally, we have this all-in-one print test. So these parts here, this goes 0 0.5, 0 0.3, 0 0.4, 0 0.3, and 0.2. You can see that the 0.2 is fixed in there and it is fused, but all the other ones 
came out really nicely. It's done a really good job on the retraction test up here. Uh, there is a little bit of fuzz just on the right um, on the right pillar here. Um, you could just tweak retraction a hair. Again, these are the stock settings in the slicer. Uh, this overhang did really nicely as well. And you can see on the side here, we've got a full bridging test and it's done a really good job there. So the part cooling on this machine is really, really good. Dimensional accuracy and circles on here also really, really good. And this is done really well as well. You can also see here, this is done as um, as a bridging piece as well, because obviously this prints this way up with no supports. And it has done a really passable job on that part as well. So really happy with how all of that test came out. Okay, so as you can see, the print quality really is bang on. I want to be really clear, these are not tuned profiles. These are just the out of the box profiles that we turned the machine on, we went to print, off we go. Um, this machine came to us second hand. So it came from Evo 3D, but another influencer had already used it. We had some issues on the live stream getting it to work. That was all down to the fact the previous person um, hadn't tightened the bed. I did tighten the bed and it threw off all the bed leveling. We just had to go through the initial setup all over again and now it worked perfectly fine. So, um, so it really, really easy to set up out of the box. It does not take long to put this together and it is rock solid. So it's got a really low center of, mass, center of gravity because this base is basically solid aluminium. Um, and as a result, it doesn't rock about loads whilst it's, uh, whilst it's shooting the, uh, the tool head around. The AI camera does a really good job of capturing things. I'll be honest to say, we've had a little bit of hit and miss with the spaghetti detective. Um, there were times where it picked it up. There were times where it didn't. Um, we didn't really have many fails, so there really wasn't much of a cause for us to use it. Um, but uh, but we, we, caught, we on purpose caused a couple of prints to fail um, and, uh, and it did detect it sort of 60 to 70% of the time, I'd say. Um, again, the problem, with, the problem with spaghetti detection is that if you've got a really fine quality print, it'd be really hard to tell the difference between spaghetti and what you're actually trying to print. So, so we didn't really find that particular feature very useful. I also don't find the app very useful, if I'm honest. Um, I don't remotely print that much, so it's just not a particularly big deal for me. Um, we have got Anchor Make Studio, so we were able to send prints directly to it, very similar to the way you can with Bamboo Studio. And that was useful. No sort of messy SD cards and dropping things and trying to put them in the machine and them actually accidentally going inside of the chassis or whatever. So nice and easy to use. The price point is very much matched at the Prusa Mark III S Plus Turbo, Mac 3 Turbo Elite, du Duality, whatever. Um, and, uh, and, and this is easily producing prints as high a quality as that Prusa would. And it is printing faster uh, than a Prusa would as well. Plus you get the AI camera. Um, I think it's easily a match for a Prusa Mark III. Is it a match for the new Prusa Mark IV? I haven't used a Prusa Mark IV, so I can't answer that question. Um, what we are going to do is we're going to put this up against a Bamboo X1 Carbon, a Prusa Mark III uh, Plus, and a FL Sun V400. And we're going to do a little bit of sort of a, a conquest of champions to see what really, uh, what performs best in its, in its space. Um, I, think this will, I think this will hold its own. And as I say, if I'm picking who this is for, maker spaces, uh, prototyping studios, uh, schools, that kind of space, I think this is exactly the kind of machine you, that those guys want. It is super easy to set up. Once it's set up, it's easy to use. It's easy to use multiples of them in a farm. So I would say that's who's buying this machine. Evo 3D will put a link in the video description, are selling this in the UK at the moment. They have them in stock um, and I highly recommend, they're a really good company to deal with. So um, so please, you know, check out the link in the description if you wanna pick one up. I wanna be clear, that isn't an affiliate link. We don't get paid, but it would be nice if they got something for, for sending us the machine to take a look at. So, um, so if I'm scoring the machine, right? If I'm scoring the machine, I'm gonna give this a, eight and a half out of 10. 
And let me just be clear about why that is. So you probably can't hear this right now on the machine, but the, the uh, I don't know if I can, anyway, the bass machine just being on is not particularly quiet. And it's even louder once it actually starts printing. Um, it's not an enclosed machine, so all of the fan noise and everything else is just is just there and you can't really do anything about it. Because it isn't enclosed, you can't be doing ABS or anything like that. To be clear, you could put it in a grow tent, you could put it in a cupboard, whatever, but in that sense, every printer can be enclosed if you build an enclosure for it. This doesn't have an enclosure, so you can't really do ABS. You can do PETG, um, and that will come out very nicely. Uh, and PLAs and, and all of that stuff you'll be able to do, but anything that needs an enclosure, ABS, ASA, is gonna be a no-go on this unless you, uh, unless you go and do it. And as well, it is a bed slinger, so you do need to be aware of the footprint that this is going to take up. So it's obviously half back and half front. Um, where you know you've got to worry about whether or not the bed has got enough space to move and all of that stuff. The power button is at the back. Please stop doing this. I need the power button at the front. That's where I am, so um, so that I don't have to leave my printer on all the time. Um, this fan that's going right now is the main board fan and does not turn off, so it is always on all the time. That's a little annoying. Um, the machine isn't doing anything right now. There's no reason for that fan to be on. It could very easily be thermostatically controlled. It isn't, that's irritating. Um, other than that, this machine is as bang on as really you could ask it to be. Um, you can have the spool holder on the side if you want to, rather than having it at the top. You can take the four screws out and put it down the side. Um, and if you've got a bit more space side to side, it feeds a little bit better that way than it does from up the top. Because obviously it's coming off of here, having to come out and go round, whereas here it's sort of feeding straight in. So if I was, if I was putting this in a space, I'd have that spool on the side so the spool was here. But it is super rock solid. It's really good quality prints. Um, it's definitely worth the money. It's just a little bit late to the game. So when this came out, as I said before, on Kickstarter, at the same time, the Bamboo Labs came out. And if you were to go and buy, say, a P1P, which currently I think is about 695, um, once you've printed the panels for it, and you buy the camera upgrade, you've kind of got this machine, except it would be enclosed if you printed the panels and, uh, and it will go faster and you know the, the Bamboo Labs machines are really nice. I'm not a Bamboo Labs fanboy, I don't think they're perfect, but what they have done is kind of set a new standard in that budget level, um, in, in that sort of budget bracket. The X1 Carbon, by any, by any measure, is a, Bit more of a premium machine it's over a thousand pound if you stack this up against a p1p it's actually a little difficult to say whether or not this would come out on top it's a little bit smaller we were a bit more restricted on materials um, but as it, on its own reviewed as a machine that's what it needs to it does what it says on the tin if you can pick these up for a good price you are not gonna be unhappy with what this can do. Um, it, it produces super clean prints, does a really good job, just a little bit loud, and perhaps a little bit of a late entry to an already crowded market. There are a lot of machines that do a pretty good job, you know, that are a bit cheaper than this, or a bit slower than this, or don't have the AI camera and things like that. It's a very much a bells and whistles printer. It's got pretty much everything that you could ask for, but do you really need to be asking for that much? And if you are asking for that much, is this the price point that you're looking for? Are you perhaps gonna go into the next bracket? I can't necessarily answer those questions. What I can say is that if you've got one, you'll more than likely be very happy with it. If you're a tinkerer like me, you probably won't be because frankly, there's actually not that much you can do to it. There's no tightening of belts. There's no adjustment of extruders. There's no, 
you know, th th there's no changing this. This is the machine that it is right now. And that's why I think it is perfect for schools, for engineering spaces, for hacker spaces, for maker spaces and things like that. It's perfect for them. I like to be able to play with my machines and I like to be able to learn. And not just about the theory of how it works. I like to see the things that I'm doing. I like watching, you know, my, my Voron or my, my Rat Rig or my Bamboo going. I like seeing all of the rods and the, being able to tighten belts and tweak things and, and play about. That's not what this machine is for, and it's, it's not its target market. So, for the purpose that this machine was built for, I think it's brilliant. Is it a machine we'll keep using? Absolutely. It produces great results. Is it a machine I love? No, not really. I'm indifferent. It doesn't get me excited about anything. It doesn't do anything that's particularly special or particularly cool. But it does what it says on the tin. And maybe that's enough. So anyway, thanks for joining us. Check out the link in the video description to Evo, Evo 3D. They do some large format printers and some great large format print services, as well as, um, as, well as some of these machines as well. So if you want to pick up your own M5, then absolutely check them out, based in the UK, and they've got stock right now. Other than that, please don't forget to like and subscribe. We'll catch you on the next video. Thanks very much.